Hey everybody, Garrett Claridge here. Today we're taking a look at these RCA bookshelf speakers. And you might notice yellow cones. Everyone that has walked into my room and seen these things went, when did you get the KRK monitors? And I don't know if that's a KRK thing now, like it's all their stuff is just yellow and ugly like that. But uh, everyone was mistaking these for mis uh, like a studio monitor type thing. But uh, really they're just like the cheap component system speakers. So we're going to give them a uh, sound test. It's the first time I'm going to hear them too. Playing Wave Race 64. From, uh, it's a cover from a, like a Nintendo 64 thing. I'll put the link up for you. So I'm gonna, I don't think this is uh, one of those speakers that lets you uh, take them apart, so, you know, the old hammer. Oh, all right. So something that's catching my attention right off the bat with these wires here, one coming out of the tweeter, one coming out of the woofer cavity, and they both had these leads on them. I was thinking it was for an LED thing that I smashed off, but then I found this little guy on the floor here, and I have reason to believe this is just an external sort of uh, crossover capacitor here. A high pass filter, and they shoved it right here. Something like that. Here we can see how they're made very cheaply with the plastic enclosures holding the drivers. Those are just sticking out of the wooden cabinet. You need that front bezel to get the port noise. Let's crack into these things, see what we got behind the scenes. Oh, I'm bending it. <laughs> hey, not bad. Nothing in the cabinet, no insulation, just a wire. I just had to remind myself what brand of speakers I was actually taking apart here because all the drivers are labeled Samsung. We actually ended up with some nice looking drivers here. The Samsung 100 watt, 6 ohm, 6.5 inch woofers. And there's also these 2.5 inch tweeters which are also labeled 6 ohm, 100 watts. That's a little weird. They look like the same power. And I'm just real curious if these had a crossover issue or the tweeter was actually blown out. We're reading 5.1 ohms on that. By the way, I totally blew it last video. The first time I ever used this uh, meter on a video and I uh, totally used it wrong. <laughs> Wanna, let's sidetrack and I'll uh, give a little example there. A couple things to remember, really. Resistance and impedance are totally different things. You're talking AC and DC voltages. A speaker will use AC voltage, you know, it's moving around. If you put a DC current in there, such as a 9 volt battery, you'll see the polarity, it'll pop out. This is actually measuring the DCR, or direct current resistance. That's actually very different than what's on this uh, magnet here. We see 6 ohms here, but DCR is also measured in ohms. Impedance on the speaker, that's measured by AC testing, like uh, they put a specific AC frequency in there and then they uh, measure the resistance across that. An 8 ohm driver typically has the DCR of 6.5 to 7 ohms. Now we're looking at something a little less here. This should be 4 ohms. 3.7. So I don't believe you have to round up as much when the impedance is lower. So here's our 6 ohm. So the 6 ohm driver is measuring 5.5 five or 5.6. Five by far not the most perfect way to check your speakers, but it will give you a general idea. Like if you were doing a guitar cabinet with 412s in it, and you had to wire it up a certain way, you're definitely going to want to know what the impedance at the end of that is. Some things to remember here, you're going to want to have your driver flat, or at least uh, no uh, obstructions. You see here, if I hit this, we get a wild reading. 
As well, we don't need to worry about the positive and negative of that. Either way is fine. Here's one I wanted to test here. No crossover or anything in there. Here's a good example of how the DCR will vary from speaker to speaker, so don't be afraid if the uh, numbers seem a little bit off. It's more of a ballpark figure, really. Now, here if I push this, that's probably going to make it go nuts. <laughs> Let's see what we have for a coil. Hey, that's not too bad. That's actually a pretty nice woofer. So that coil's an inch and a half in diameter. That's pretty interesting. That's more like you see on a subwoofer. Not a bad quality uh, little driver here with a rubber surround. I wonder what it's made of. It almost looks like that Kevlar kind of shit. Just yellow paper. See what's inside here. Pretty cool looking. I'm gonna have to take this apart to get this tweeter uh, powered up. I think the crossovers are blowing on both these. One half blue, but it went right through that song. Wow! Oh! That was insane! That's a really thick paper. Oh wow. It's still pouring smoke. Oh. Fuck, that was a bad idea. <laughs> That's one tough cone and surround. Always easier the second time when you figure out how they come apart, right? Whoops. So I'd just like to know if this still works or not. Oh nice, it's reading. 5.1. That makes sense. 6 ohms. So this says 100 watts on it. Let's see. So here we have a tweeter plugged in full range. Whoa. Whoa, I've never seen a tweeter do that before. That was kind of interesting. <laughs> so the glue actually melted on this coil and uh, made it quite an oily mess. All the residue, it's pretty gross. All right, I'm gonna try this one with the dust cap left on.
Ah, and it just dies. Oh wow, I could actually see the dust cap melting. Ooh. Actually, the thing I like about these cabinets the most is the fact that I'm not going to have to chop them up to fit them inside my wood stove. <laughs> Alright guys, have yourself a nice fucking day.